today on an all-new Dr. Phil, a former guest. Five years ago, I cussed out your producer. Her daughter who lives on the streets. I saw her being handcuffed on the news. For the first time in two years. You said you wanted to come home, and you said no. They'll face off. You are not going to use my house as a squat house. You don't know what I'm doing. I understand. That you screwed my brain up and fried it like a psycho. I'm psychotic now, dude. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. ago, I did a show featuring parents with extreme discipline styles. Now, one of those guests was Tammy, a mother who would unleash her special brand of anger by yelling and screaming at her two teenage daughters. You tell them, don't ever send something like that to my phone again, ever. I'm an angry mom. You show some respect for and don't slam the door. My mother's a very angry person. That's why we're going 45, because you got to be on your phone instead of paying attention to the damn road. God. But when you're on the road, you think that traffic is supposed to part like the Red Sea so you can sail down the road because you are the most important person in the world. Almost. Not quite, <laughs> but almost. Well, who the hell are you? What are you mad at? Are, are you mad that your life didn't work out the way it was supposed to? Or you yell at them, but it isn't them. I feel like I've been cheated <clears throat> my whole life. You're the mom now, and that means you can choose to be different. Are you going to come back and tell us how it's working? Sure. Well, that was five years ago when Tammy used screaming and cursing as her only method of discipline. Well, after the show, Tammy claims she took my advice by curbing her anger and setting up strong boundaries with her daughter, Tatiana. But things seemingly took a turn for the worse three years ago, and Tammy says she had no choice when Tatiana refused to abide by her rules, which were really, I think, quite reasonable. Either stay in school, get a job, volunteer, or you'd have to just move out. She says Tatiana had picked the ladder and has been living on the streets, which includes panhandling for money, train hopping, and hitchhiking around the United States. Tammy wonders if it's all her fault. Since I've been on the Dr. Phil show, I am not such an angry person. It saved my life, but my two girls have taken two different paths. My youngest, Tamika, went from getting D's and F's to getting ready to start her first year of college. However, with my older daughter, things have not gone so well. Things changed for Tatiana when she would not go back to school for her senior year. I gave her three options, get a job, get a volunteer position, or she could do anything towards education. She left that day and never came home again. She told me she was gonna sleep under the bridge with her friends. Tatiana has not slept in my house again since then. The day after Tatiana turned 18, she got in a fight with the food cart vendors downtown, and she was arrested. Police have just arrested several people in downtown Portland after that fight at a food cart pod. A long-standing feud between the downtown food cart owners and these street kids really came to a violent head. I came home from work and saw her being handcuffed on the noose. I felt heartbroken. Tatiana has been now living on the streets for almost three years. About one month ago, I got a message that asked if she could come home for a month. I told Tatiana she could not come home with the lifestyle she's currently living. The decision not to let Tatiana come back home has been one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make in my life. I want to know from Dr. Phil, have I made the right decision? Well, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Um, let's talk about when you left here before. 
Did I get through to you? Did you listen? Oh, I definitely listened. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting to me to find out that I was the issue, not Tatiana, not Tamika, not anybody else. Mm -hmm. I really didn't get grasped that before. I was too busy blaming everybody else and everything outside of me, and I was miserable. You were right. I was miserable. Since then, you made a quantum shift in the way you approach this with a lot of hard work after the show because we always say this is the beginning, not the end, when we first meet, that a lot of work starts then. Absolutely. But Tatiana decided that she just wasn't going to go to school anymore. Yeah. I wanted six months to, as she said, run with my friends and do what I want, and then you can talk to me again about what, what I will or won't do. It was very scary because I really didn't think Tatiana would make the choice that she's made. I have some excerpts of your letter. Now, when did you write this? October 24th of 2012. Okay, so you gave her a month. So you said, by November 23rd, I'm going to give you a month here to put this into effect. And if you don't do this within a month, then I'm going to give you a couple of weeks to get out. December 9th would have been one week after her 18th birthday. Okay. A lot of parents are watching this and they're wondering, because I always talk about you got to take a stand and you got to you got to do what you believe. She said, you must be doing at least one of the following by de November 23rd in order to continue living here as of December 9th, 2012. One, have a paying job and you can keep the money. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm going to start charging you rent and groceries and utilities and all of that. Two, volunteer at least 10 hours a week. I was even willing to pay her minimum wage. I told her I would give her minimum wage for the volunteer hours that she worked and I would not tax as long as I could verify that she was actually volunteering somewhere. And three, participating in education career advancement. And if you choose not to do at least one of these things, then you'll have to find another place to live by December 9th, 2012. Yeah. This letter reads very differently than the woman that I met on stage who was screaming at people from your car for being on their cell phone, you sons of bitches. That is significantly different than what I would have said and done five years ago. Because yeah. five years ago, I cussed out your producer. I cussed out the <laughs> airport guy because he gave me wrong directions. The driver because he didn't have a sign. I even cussed somebody out after your show because they wouldn't let me walk around the lot. And your question for me is, did you do the right thing? And I'm going to give you my honest opinion right after the break. respect for my mom. She makes me out to be the bad guy. I didn't move out. My mother typed me an eviction notice and made me sign it. I packed my bags and I left. And later... We're not homeless. We have family. All of us who are on the streets are so screwed up from something that has happened to us that we don't know what to do. I don't have the answers for you. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil... She wants custody of her unborn grandchild. This white woman doesn't have the right to say you guys aren't fit. Is mom being protective? She's telling her mother that you're hitting her. I've never hit Pearson. Why is she saying that if it's not true? Or controlling. Jaden is a waste of perfectly good breathing space. He just needs to go away. I'm scared of her. She's a terrifying woman. You are so fake. That's Monday. When Tatiana first left the house, I would go visit Tatiana under whatever local bridge or whatever street she told me she was on and take her food on a weekly basis. So right now, I've come down to underneath one of our bridges. Uh, this is one of the areas where I used to see Tatiana um, and bring her food. This is another one of the weekly areas where I would come feed my daughter. Portland, Oregon has made the news recently with the overpopulation of transient homeless teens. Now, that was former guest Tammy showing us where she used to find her daughter, Tatiana. 
as one of the hundreds of Portland street kids. Now, Tammy came to the show five years ago about moms and their uncontrollable anger. Now, after the show, she said she was able to curb her temper and put her youngest daughter, Tamika, on the right path. But unfortunately, her relationship with her eldest daughter, Tatiana, suffered. Three years ago, Tammy says Tatiana, then 17, announced she was not finishing school. So Tammy gave her a choice, either stay in school, get a job, volunteer, or you're going to have to find somewhere else to live. Much to Tammy's surprise and disappointment, Tatiana chose to pack up and move out that very day and has been living on the streets ever since. After the Dr. Phil show, my mom kicked me out and I've been living on the streets. But I didn't move out. My mother typed me an eviction notice and made me sign it. I didn't want to do it. And I tried to communicate with my mom and explain to her why I wasn't going to school. But she doesn't listen to what I have to say. I packed my bags and I left. My choice of traveling is definitely hitchhiking, but I used to hop freight trains as well. The best thing about traveling on a freight train would have to be the sights you see. It's just so wonderful and great. And it's just, it's just awesome. I've been to Oregon. Washington, California, Nevada, Arizona, Montana, Idaho, Texas, Tennessee, Arkansas. I get into fistfights all the time. This one time, I guess for lack of a better word, it was a really pathetic attempt at a sexual assault. It's just some drunk guy that I had been hanging out with all day that ran at me and grabbed my throat and shoved me backwards. I flipped out my pocket knife and I grabbed his arm and I and I cut from right here to here and I looked and said, next time you think about doing that to a girl, you're gonna look at that scar and you're not gonna do that ever again to anybody. I asked my mom if I could come home just to see her over Christmas. And she was like, no, I'm not going to let you squat around the house. I don't really care about my mom's opinion on anything. She makes me out to be the bad guy. She really does need help. And a lot of these kids out here on the streets have uh, families they get to go back to for Christmas. And I can't do that. Well, Tammy hasn't seen 20-year-old Tatiana in two years. So, Tatiana, come on out. Please have a coffee. I love you so much. How are you? How are you? How are you? Have a seat. Right on. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about being here? I'm not excited about it at all, but yeah. I feel privileged for sure. Yeah. Uh, why are you not excited about it? Well, I wasn't really um, excited about getting my uh, lifestyle exploited. I just feel that it's hard for people to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. think it might be it. mischaracterized. Yes, that would be a more correct word, yes. Well, then let's k listen. That's a good thing about your being here. You have the floor and you can set anything straight that seems to be mischaracterized and i do have some questions all right that maybe will help you because you said your mother kicked you out mm -hmm. I, I i find it interesting that you see it that way because i read the letter the eviction notice that mm -hmm. you talked about what did you want to happen? Um, I wanted understanding, to be brutally honest with you. My reason for not going to school was the fact that I had such a stressful household. I totally get why you would have trouble finding traction in school and in life at that early time because you were living in a situation that was just rah, 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 well, rah, rah, all the time. I, I get that. I think at this point, it uh, like I understand that my lifestyle may not be the most favored, but my family wasn't giving me the help, so I learned at a young age that I have to rely on myself and do <clears throat> what makes me happy. And that may not look good to other people, and it may not make sense to other people, but if it makes me happy, that's what really matters in the long run. Yeah, I, I understand that theory more than you might imagine. <laughs> We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about what life on the streets is really like for Tatiana. And I'm going to tell her why I understand that and exactly what I understand about it. We'll be right back. This is my machete. It's a kukri. Just for safety. I try to just live day by day and not worry about the future. 
And later... I understand that I have made so many mistakes. Like, I'm psychotic now, dude. I can't have normal conversations. You know how hard it is for me to talk to someone who lives in a house? I am very in love with Kit Moore. She's already married. She wanted a divorce. But obsessed with a country star. Beside your back. I got it tattooed. You're serving your husband with a restraining order, and you've got Mary Me Kit Moore painted on your window? What are you, 12? An uncle too affectionate with his 16-year-old niece? You put whipped cream on your neck, and Grace says you asked her to lick it off. I don't remember doing that. The creep meter is pegging over here. They survived a house of horrors. Locks on the refrigerator. Blood splattered on a wall. The children speak out for the first time. You found some guns? Yeah. Well, you're going to go inside and kill all of them. Is his daughter's survivalist boyfriend... Did he kidnap your daughter? He did. No. A threat to his family. She asked me to come get her. You're lying. I'm lying? Why don't you yeah. shut the hell up? I'm not going to shut my mouth. If I didn't think I'd go to jail for it, I would go across this three feet of floor right here, and I'd take his damn head off. Former guest Tatiana was arrested along with five other people almost three years ago for allegedly attacking a food cart vendor while living on the streets. Today, she still lives on the streets. She train hops. She hitchhikes. She doesn't consider herself homeless. She considers herself a traveler. At the break, you said you're really frustrated right now. What are you frustrated about? Uh, the fact that that specific video clip, what, what it said during it, uh, what I what was followed by, it's mostly for protection, was the fact that I have never used it for protection. That's not a weapon. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. That's why I have it. Well, that's why you're here to clarify. So th this is it, and mm -hmm. this is a... You, you you carry this with you? Yeah. Do you understand that somebody out there could take that and hurt you with that? Why do you think that's going to happen, Mother? I don't think that's going to happen. Are you worried I'm about asking it? you if because I love you. That's why I'm worried about it. You don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm fine. You have still not tried to reach out, ask me what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, or try to even attempt to understand what's going on in my head. Why are you calling me and asking me to come home if you think I don't care? Because I need And why family. do we have conversations with each other on Facebook all the time about how much I love you? And I ask you, are you staying safe? Are you ready to change yet what you're doing? You've never asked No, me. Mommy, I'm fine. I know that maybe it's hard for you to understand because you think I'm just trying to mooch off of you guys or be in and out of your life or whatever. But look, honestly, the thing is, Mom, you know Dad doesn't talk to me. I don't talk to my dad. I have no family. All these dirty kids out here, all my friends and stuff, get to go home and see their family for Christmas. You know why? Because their family loves them and understands that what they're doing right now is just a phase. Just like you used to tell me when I was younger Talks and in high school. and you used three to say, years. This isn't a phase. This is a lifestyle you've now developed. I thought how, you would go through a phase and, and what's wrong with home. It? And what's wrong with it? It's tell me dangerous. Exactly. How do you know that? Because you're living on the streets. Look at the scars all over you. I can look at your hands and see the scars That's all over you. getting mosquito bites. Of okay. course it's a little dangerous. I don't have mosquito bites all over Because you stay in your house all day. Which is why I say what you're doing just is not, it's not safe. Well, here's a Facebook post that you, you after Tammy refused to let you come home. Tatiana, anyone in Portland? Today I'm talking to former guest Tammy, whose daughter, 20-year-old Tatiana, has been living on the streets and traveling around the country the past three years, hitchhiking and train hopping. You said you, you get that the whole purpose here is to portray this as some big drama, horrible lifestyle. You couldn't be more wrong. Um, the truth of the matter is, I've been homeless. Damn, really? I lived on the streets, and I know that it's, um, it's not fun. It's not cool. It's not always dangerous. It's mostly just boring. <laughs> yeah, big time.
you said you wanted to come home and you, you, you said no. Uh, you told me I was in a squat at your house. You used the word squat. <clears throat> I said you are not going to come home and use my house as, as a, a squat, squat house for 30 days and then go back out to the streets. So until you change that lifestyle, you can't come back to the house. Okay. It doesn't mean you're not welcome in the house. No, you are always welcome. You can always come home. I will forever be here for you. Funny. You must make changes first in order to do to come back home. I have no family. I have nothing out here at all. I got myself and my dog, and I got my friends that I get to see, but you don't get to tell people everything, you know? It's whatever. I don't really mind it. I've gotten used to it at this point. I just wanted a family, you know? It it's hurt your just, feelings. uh, yeah, it's devastating. You're calling me to come home for 30 days while you're out living on the streets, doing drugs, running the streets. I don't that's, know where that's you're how at. You, that's how you think of me? That's really what you think about me? That's what you think of me. Well, help tell her what she should think. What am I missing? You should have just at least tried to understand me before you dragged me onto here, dude. I understand that I have made so many mistakes in your life. That you screwed my brain child. up and fried it like a psycho? Like, I'm psychotic now, dude. I can't have normal conversations. You know how hard it is for me to talk to someone who lives in a house? I can't do it. I really can't. It's really weird and it makes me feel awkward because I never got a chance right. to learn responsibility. So You're how right. am I supposed to go from being homeless and doing what I'm doing, doing what makes me happy, what I think is right for myself? This is, I feel that what I'm doing is right. I feel justified in everything that I'm doing. And I'm trying to understand where people on the other side are coming from, saying that you're homeless, you, you shouldn't be doing this, we're worried about you. But I'm no worried. one's tried to understand. No one's no one's listening. I the only under people that listen are the other homeless people I hang out with. Homeless people. I mean, I'm saying that word on television. We're not homeless. We travel. We have family. All of us who are on the streets are so screwed up from something that has happened to us that we don't know what to do. Okay, so I don't have the answers for you, and I don't know what else to do. And financially, I can't just protect you and get you and pull you away. I'm not asking away. you for money. I haven't asked you. I didn't ask you to take care of me. And you wouldn't give me a chance. I do the things I do, and I'm making the decisions I'm making because I love you. And I am I just want to see you have a better life for yourself. This is what I want for my life. I love it. I love traveling. Then maybe I'm missing something. You are. Because you don't sound happy when you call me and tell me you're lonely. Because you're my mom. And you miss me. You're my mom. You're supposed to be there so I can cry on your I shoulder and talk here. to you about boys and like tell you that my life sucks even when it doesn't. Just like I was when I was a kid and I'm like, oh, my life's so horrible. What am I going to do? I got this roof over my head and food to eat. Like we cry about things to let it out. You can't just, you know what I mean? I call you and talk to you because you're my mom and like I'm supposed to be able to talk to you and cry to you about dumb things that right. should be irrelevant. And you should, I don't, I mean, I understand where you could take those things a bit personally and say, wow, she's really upset out there. Maybe I should do something to help. Uh, I don't want, I just want you to talk to me. I just want you to be my family, dude. I don't want anything from you but love. And for you to understand what I'm doing is right to me. Don't I respond to that. Just life. listen to it. Don't, don't. You need to hear what she just said. Don't respond to it. Just hear it. We're going to take a break. Tammy has another daughter, 18-year-old uh, Tamika, who has not seen her sister since Tatiana left home. The sisters are about to see each other when we come back. The last time I saw her, we went to an IHOP with my mom, and she was drunk. My greatest fear for Tatiana is that she's going to die young. On an all new Dr. Phil. She wants custody of her unborn grandchild. This white woman doesn't have the right to say you guys aren't fit. Is mom being protective? She's telling her mother that you're hitting her. I've never hit Kirsten. Why is she saying that if it's not true? Or controlling. Jaden is a waste of perfectly good breathing space. He just needs to go away. I'm scared of her. She's a terrifying woman. You are so fake. That's Monday. There's another family member who has a lot to say and is um, 
really missing uh, Tatiana, and that's her little sister, Tamika. After appearing on the Dr. Phil show, my mom stopped having outbursts. It was wonderful. But Tatiana just kind of seemed to be the same. When Tatiana first left, I was really angry. I couldn't believe that she just would leave me there because we had just started getting close again. When she calls every once in a while, it feels like I'm talking to a stranger. I want my mother and Tatiana to get along. The last time I saw her, we went to an IHOP with my mom, and she was drunk. My greatest fear for Tatiana is that she's going to die young. Well, Tatiana hasn't seen her little sister since she left home three years ago. But Tamika is here, and she's been waiting to see her. So, uh, Tamika, come on out. Dude, you look so pretty. You look so different, bro. <laughs> Tamika, it's good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you too. Sorry. It's all right. Oh, you look way different. How's it feel to see your sister? I don't know. It's weird. I mean, it's wonderful. It is weird. It's... I'm looking at a stranger. Yeah. And uh, I want to look, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You miss her? Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, how do you feel to see your little sister? Excited because I've been waiting for this forever. I don't feel like I'm looking at a stranger, but I understand that I've changed a lot. Yeah. You said you want these two to, to get along and stop the Cold War. This has lasted too long, and you want to have a relationship with her, and she wants to have a relationship with you. Just sit down, talk about it. This is what you guys have wanted. Stop this. You, you're pushing. You're pushing yourself away from her. Here, come her. here. <laughs> Go ahead. That's awesome. I didn't. I never thought about it that way either. I never really looked at it that way either. I... Go ahead. You're doing great. I no, no seriously. No, you made seriously. me nervous. What else could I like you do? I like that seat better. Okay. <laughs> I, you, you, you're going to dummy up in the hot seat. I'll move you back. But you, your point is right. I mean, they, this is something that this has to be talked about, right? I mean, it's... Yeah. This has lasted too long. This is ridiculous how long this has lasted. It's just, it's just ridiculous at this point. I, I love you, but ridiculous is the only word I can think of. I know that it's like I'm taking everything for granted, but I don't... <laughs> I don't even know. You don't sound ridiculous. Not at all. Because I don't know how you, to explain it to you guys. Because I, I have, I do <laughs> like my lifestyle a lot, and I don't talk about it because, because it's not, it's not just me living this lifestyle. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of other people too. And you know, all of us get judged a lot, all the time. I get judged all the time. I don't have somewhere to call home. And then when I call you and you judge me. You know how bad that hurts? I'm so sorry. When I call you because I got, because I was, got, I was rude to or got my face spit in or got pushed over. And I call you and I'm just like, mommy, this sucks. Or Mika, this sucks. It sucks, but I'm calling you guys because sometimes I go through things and I just want a little bit of like, no, you're, it's okay. You know, I want you guys to just say like something, something to make me feel better. Anything. I just want to know that. That somebody loves me and cares about me, and I'm not just the only one having to deal with this. Because I want a family too. You have family. You just... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 
323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. First off, I've heard you say several times that it, it's hard for you to sit here right now because everybody in this audience is judging you. I can tell you these people may not agree with every decision you're making, but I'll promise you these people are not judging you right now. And they're judging you, they're judging me because I've been where you are. And I, I've been married to that woman out there for 39 years and she will tell you. Um, that's Robin, wave Robin so oh. she can see you. I think she will tell you I'm the least judgmental person she's ever met. That's I'm the least true. judgmental person I've ever met. <laughs> I can tell you for sure. Very I got true. two boys. One of them is so tatted up, you, people would pick, if they were lined up a thousand kids, <laughs> they would say, this one is the last one they would pick as Dr. Phil's son. He's highly talented. He's very creative. He's very individual. This is, this oh, is awesome. him. Oh, awesome. He has a hell of a lot more tattoos than that. <laughs> <laughs> Same kid with him or without him. Doesn't matter to me. Look, not even God can change what has happened. You've made a lot of mistakes early on. Absolutely. You had a lot of mistakes made in your life early on. The legacy is being passed, and that needs to stop. If she says, I want to know that I can come home for a couple of weeks, we, we drug tested her. She's overcome a lot of things in her life. She's at a good place with that right now. If she wants to come home and stay for a couple of weeks or whatever, I think you, I think you should let her do that. You're dealing with a lot of hurt, and you're underestimating yourself. And I, I, I hate for you being out there in an incommunicado situation. And the first thing I would like to do is connect you with a lifeline so you can. I mean, I, I just personally, I would like to give you an iPhone or an iPad or something just just let me give you a gift where you can reach out when you need to reach out. I don't like you being out of contact. I don't like it either. And then let me arrange for you to have some professional help in terms of life coach, transitional coaching, whatever is necessary to help you start making a plan at your pace when you're ready to do it. I, I can make this happen through something called Doctor on Demand where you can reach out to this person electronically from anywhere. So you have somebody that you trust that you can talk to privately to work on these things. And this is at your pace, your discretion to do what you want to do because I think you can do more, I think you want to do more. But will you take that help? Yeah. I want to help you. I'm not judging you. I want to help you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to stop traveling yet, though. I didn't ask you to. <laughs> yeah, but I do want help, yes. And if you at home want your own Doctor On Demand, just go to Google Play Store or the iTunes App Store and download the Doctor On Demand app. Now, first, Tamika was giving some pretty good advice up here. Now I understand there's a six-year-old out there giving her divorcing parents advice who is winning the hearts of millions. I'll share my thoughts about that after the break. Okay. Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. I found something else while we were researching around that I wanted to talk about. Because one of the things that I hear people say, I hear them say it all the time on this stage. They say, you know what? 
the kids don't really know what's going on. Really? You really think kids don't know what's going on between you and your spouse? Trust me, they do. They know what's going on. They hear what's said. They hear what isn't said. They even notice if you set your coffee cup down with a little extra bang in the morning. Out of the mouths of babes, trust me. Now, little six-year-old Tiana just might change your mind about how much kids know. Mom, are you ready to be his friend? Yes. Try not to be that, that high up to be friends. I want everything to be low, okay? Okay. Just try your best. Oh I, I don't want you and my dad to be replaced in and me again. I want you and my dad to be placed and settled and be friends. I'm not trying to be mean. I just want everyone to be friends. And if I can be nice, I think all of us can be nice too. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm trying to do my best in my heart. Nothing else than that. I want you, mom, my dad, everyone to be friends. I want everyone to be smiling. Not like being mad. I want everything to smile. Did you hear what she's saying? She's saying, settle down. Bring it down. I want you to be friends. I'm not trying to be mean. I just want you to be friends. I have two rules when it comes to children, and they're really, really important rules to follow. Number one, do not burden them with situations they cannot control because it makes them feel helpless, and do not ask them to deal with adult issues. That makes them feel helpless. I'd like to thank all of my guests today. Now, I've been walking down this runway for 14 years now, but for the first time, Robin and I are going to invite a fan to join us through a campaign with Omaze.com called Robin's Walk a Day in My Shoes, right? That's exactly right, and I have to tell you, I can't wait to see who wins the chance to fly to Hollywood and sit with me during a show. It will be the first time in the show's history an audience member will ever join our signature walk-off. So... That's right. right here, so we will have to start walking a bit slower, so the person who wins will so have walk slow like when a that really happens great fun time. Deal. Yeah, so you know when she gets here and she starts to walk, you know it's going to be a girl. Oh well, I guess I don't know that. Yeah. So let's say it's a girl. Should we put her in the middle? Oh hell Should yeah! We no, okay. she, no, okay. she never here. No, okay, she's so over here. If it's a guy, a guy he, he can be over here. I think he should be over here. No, he can be over here. Okay, okay. Well, I, want uh, some guy I think it should be hand. slow like this though, and it's only ten dollars. The best part, ten dollars to get months. the chance. Ten dollars for this chance, and I like this slow walk. Yeah. Go to amaze.com slash Robin for all the details. Yes. We'll see you next time. We're going to have a fun time. So we're walking all the way off the stage. Now we're going backstage. And she will get to do all of this. And it's all for charity, of course. It's all for, all charity. for charity. Yes. It'll be so much fun. See, we're still walking. We're still walking. And let's say she's still with us. We should charge you another 10 bucks to get to walk home. $10. You can be right here. We're still walking. We're stopping now. Okay. We're doing a squirrel. <laughs>